In the clear, warm waters of the Caribbean Sea lies one of the wonders of the living world, coral reefs. A coral reef is the most biologically diverse ecosystem known to man. And for us here in the Caribbean, it's an essential part of the fabric of life. Their value to the economy of the region has been estimated to be between 1.5 and 3.5 billion US dollars per year. Tourists come from all over the world to marvel at the beauty and diversity of the creatures that inhabit these underwater cities. Coral reefs are also an important part of our food supply, providing nursery grounds for many species of fish and shellfish. They produce the white sand on our beaches, and perhaps most importantly, they protect the coastline from the constant pounding of ocean swells. Corals have one major weakness. They're extremely sensitive to temperature. In July and August 2005, the temperature of the Caribbean Sea became unusually warm, rising to about 1.5 degrees above the average for that time of year. This small increase triggered the worst mass coral beaching event ever witnessed in the region. In a bleached state, corals can only survive a few months, and by early 2006, about a quarter of the corals, from Tobago to Florida, had died. Many of the survivors weakened by stress have been affected by diseases that are now spreading to previously healthy reefs. In the last two decades, the frequency and severity of coral bleaching events have been increasing worldwide, and scientists fear that many reefs may disappear in the coming century because of climate change. We've all heard about global warming or climate change, but for some of us here in the Caribbean, climate change is still perceived as something that isn't really relevant to our daily lives. For others, it is something that may affect us in the distant future, something for the scientists to think about. The truth is, we are failing to recognize the real threat that climate change poses to our world and to small countries like ours. Meteorologists across the globe have proven without doubt that the world is getting warmer. Over the last century, the average global temperature has increased by about 0.75 degrees Celsius. The rise in temperature may seem small, but it has already led to many changes in our weather, and in particular, an increase in the intensity and frequency of extreme weather events. One of the region's recent victims of extreme weather is the island of Grenada. In 2004, Hurricane Ivan took just a few hours to cross the island, but caused such catastrophic damage that Grenada lost the equivalent to 200% of its GDP. An astonishing 90% of its buildings were destroyed. Grenada's nutmeg farmers lost almost all their trees and their main means of income. Five years on, and the new trees are finally producing fruit but production is still less than a quarter of what it was before Ivan. Today, the famous Spice Island and its capital, St. George's, have recovered much of their peace and tranquility, a credit to the resilience and strength of its people. But beneath the surface, the scars of that terrible day remain on its buildings and in its communities. Some people depended on the nutmeg. It was their livelihood. They could have get up in the morning and go and pick up 50, 100 pounds and go and sell it and get $200 and, you know, they were able to get by, you know. But after the hurricane, it was different. That means of income stopped. One guy ran to a shelter and when he came back and he looked up, his house was destroyed and all his nutmeg. And he just sat on the wall right there and he died right there. You know, it was too much, you know. I guess he wondered how he was going to make it after. You know, it was terrible. Hurricanes have been leaving their trails of misery and destruction across the region throughout the history 
as this map clearly shows. But in the past 40 years, warmer seas have led to a sharp rise in the number of category 3, 4 and 5 hurricanes. In the past five years alone, we have had Katrina, the costliest hurricane of all time, and Wilma, the most intense storm ever recorded which underwent explosive deepening as it strengthened from a tropical storm to a Category 5 in under 30 hours. In 2008, the Caribbean suffered the third most destructive hurricane season on record. Haiti was devastated by four consecutive hurricanes that took the lives of over 800 people and left thousands homeless and starving. The scale of the misery shocked the entire world. Global warming is changing the nature of hurricanes, making them not only stronger but also intensify faster, giving people less time to prepare and reach shelter. This makes them much more dangerous. But as the people of Guyana know, hurricanes are not the only extreme weather events that we should be concerned about. In 2005, we had the worst flood in our history. We lost the equivalent of 60% of GDP. Climate change is not just about the environment and a threat to the way of life of people, but it is a development issue. Because when a country loses that significant amount of, of resources, it's very difficult to restart. It's time is the development process. The extreme rains of 2005 were repeated in 2006 and 2008. What was considered a one in 50 year event is now becoming almost routine. 80% of Guyana's population live in coastal plains that are below sea level. They depend on an extensive drainage and pumping system to stay above water. Maintaining and upgrading this infrastructure is a constant and increasingly expensive challenge. The people of Guyana know that climate change is against them, and it's just a matter of time before rising sea levels and intensifying rainfall cause the next big flood. These coastal lowlands are also home to Guyana's agriculture, which exports much of its produce to its Caribbean neighbors. We having rainfall uh, without a pattern, you, you know, it just comes on some month that you never expected it. And it is difficult for, for rice because we do two crops, you need two seasons, a little wet season and a dry season to do the reaping and you know, that sort of thing. And it put us in an awkward position sometimes. Are we feeling it? Definitely. Yeah, there's no two way about that. And it seems that every year go by, it's getting worse. To try and understand the cause of climate change, the United Nations established in 1988 the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. This body comprises 2,000 of the world's leading scientists. In their latest report, the IPCC concluded that it is now beyond reasonable doubt that global warming is caused by man and what is called the enhanced greenhouse effect. The Earth is surrounded by a thin layer of gas called the atmosphere. This layer of gas is really our survival blanket. It protects us from harmful radiation while allowing some radiation through the clear atmosphere to the surface of the Earth. Much of this radiation is reflected back into space, but some is absorbed by the atmosphere and releases heat or infrared radiation. This ability to trap heat is called the greenhouse effect because the atmosphere acts a bit like glass in a greenhouse. Certain gases like carbon dioxide are particularly good at trapping heat. Over the last hundred years, humans have produced more and more carbon dioxide so more heat was trapped in the atmosphere by this enhanced greenhouse effect. We emit roughly 27 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere annually, mostly from burning fossil fuels such as oil, gas and coal. 